All right, Val, so uh, we talked about it. We've got two uh, games going on here in Caston tonight, the soccer match out here, and then the uh, Lady Comets volleyball team is hosting Culver in a big early uh, season Hoosier North Athletic Conference matchup. And Val, the Comets uh, on a roll here to start the season. They won the Cass County invite, defeating uh, Pioneer in the championship, and then they defeated Carroll on uh, Tuesday night. So they're looking to keep this hot streak going here as they begin their season. Right, three and zero, and they've got Col. You know, they, again, they like you mentioned, they start Hoosier North play tonight, and then they go to North Miami for the Tomahawk invite on Saturday. I'll be very curious to see how how well they stand up to those teams. And then uh, Castano's Pioneer next Thursday. Yeah, another big conference game, obviously for them. All right. So I think it's been what five years since Pioneer lost a conference match in volleyball. Has it been that long? Wow. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Placencia will have kick it back in the direction of Parker Wallace. Parker's a senior. He's been the keeper since he was a freshman. Nice shot by Dossman to head it down. That's the freshman McGrew. Goes out. It'll be a throw in for Caston. Alex Craig. That's Alex Revoir Tendi intercepts. And he's taken off the ball. And McGrew loses it out. Throw in for Cast. Knocked out by Rochester. You know, Tindy's one of those. I don't know if he's played a lot of soccer or not, but he. Oh, there was a miss. And oh, what a play. That was a heck of a play by Wyatt Davis to save a. Step in front of the empty net. It'll be a corner kick for Caston, but that was a sensational play by Davis. And that will be knocked out again by Heishman. Kicking in. Towards the net, Caston will use the corner to make a pass to Hook. There's McGrew. Lofted into the zone by Rogers, but it's not a threatening ball. Picked up by Wallace. There's a good through ball. Crom. Whoa, Halterman has trouble staying on his feet, but he's able to pick it up before Placencia can get there. Boy, Drew McGrew had to think, oh my, oh my goodness, here's my first varsity goal. I've got this. And Wyatt Davis wasn't going to let it happen. Aguilar Mendez. Sends it out on a pass intended for McGrew. Nice job by Dossman. Wallace steps way out of the goal. Lofts one high in the air. Headed back in the air by Grant Bailey. A good hustle by Grant Bailey to get back to that. Placencia. Pass intended for Tindy. Dossman intercepts. It's Camden Furnival with a touch. Braden Furnival. Aguilar Mendez. 
Long through ball. Is that onside? Oh, and it's tipped over and into the net. What a shot. And Caston takes a one to nothing lead and a goal by Alex Craig. You know, you questioned that, Val. I kind of wondered that myself. Was he was he onside? They didn't call it, obviously, but he was sure out in front there by about uh, you know eight or nine yards. So Aguilar Mendez with the assist. Wait, what's going on here? Or was it a – what's going on here? Was that kicked back to Wallace? Yeah. Okay. I didn't see that. Yeah. Kind of a battle in midfield. Rogers, Infernable, there's Grant Bailey. Goes down, gets back up. Pass in the middle, Bailey. Nice footwork. Turn it back. Finds the angle on the pass to Braden Infernable. Tanner Sutton. Caston. Goes out, throw in for Rochester. Craig. Oh, Craig maintains, and the ball is stopped and finally kicked out by Bailey. Was that Davis again? I think it was. That went out the side there, so it's just going to be a throw here. So the Zebras need to kind of reset this defense. Bailey can't control. Shot by Aguilar Mendez is blocked at the defense. You talked about it in the pregame, Val, that uh, Caston would have some opportunities. They've had two really close ones, and they've put one in the back of the net. So mm -hmm. they've been taking advantage of this Rochester defense here early. Good slide tackle by Aguilar Mendez, and then Dossman tries to send a pass. It's knocked out. McGrew with the throw in. And then Davis knocks it up in the air. It will go out. It will be a throw in for Caston again. And again, the ball gets in the box, and Dakota Burden just knocks it out. That'll be a corner for Caston. And the thing about Aguilar Mendez is he's got very, very creative. ways to get the ball in the box, but that one was knocked out. It's almost a little bit of a shock that he's only a junior because it just seems like we've been talking about yeah. him forever. He's been such a good player for the Comets. I can remember when we were down here for this game two years ago, he had a really good game that night as well. Mm -hmm. Pass by Rogers Bailey. Can he? Oh, they kick it back across the side of the field. Back into the box. It deflects off Burden. Wallace was able to stop it. 
Coach Backus is going to need some Pepto-Bismol after this first half. That was uh, another misplay by the Zebras. Wallace punts it out to midfield. Placencia. Good touch there by Sherrick. Dossman knocks that one out. Furnival, Placencia, and that was Sherrick who got in the way. Aguilar Mendez to Drew McGrew. Throw in here for McGrew. Heishman knocks it out. Heishman heads it. They can't locate it. Craig. Ranstead. Ranstead battling with McGrew. It's knocked out. Throw in for Rochester. That was intended for Tindy, but Aguilar Mendez intercepts. Wallace backs up to make sure he catches that in the box. Bailey at midfield. Well, that's one thing we've seen about Grant Bailey already is playing much more. It seems like he's playing a lot more midfield than he did last year. Mm -hmm. Last year he was back line. And I, but I think that's just a credit to Grant's athleticism. I just think you want to – the more touches he gets, the better. Yeah, he looks like he's put on some muscle too, which is to be expected. Mm -hmm. And looks like he's uh, ready to have a good year. Of course, he – Runs cross country as well, so he's he's got a busy yeah. fall. Pass was intended for Hook. Wallace stepped in the way. Tindy couldn't cr control. Rogers. Rogers and Furnival battling for it. Knocked out by Camden Furnival. I'm not sure how well that red line shows up there, but if you're wondering why they kept going after it was out of bounds, the football sideline is not the out of bounds on the uh, soccer pitch. It's mm -hmm. There's a red line about, well, it looks like maybe two or three yards wider than the football field. Craig? McGrew went down, and that is going to be a foul, I believe, on Rochester. A pretty clean start to the first half, but uh, two calls here in the last uh, 30 seconds or so. Mentioned Grant Bailey, his sister Olivia Bailey, playing golf tonight. Rochester hosting Winnemac at Round Barn Golf Club at Mill Creek. And Olivia Bailey and Bianca Huizar from Winnemac are paired up. Paired up as we yeah. speak. Bianca has already broken Winnemac school record twice already on the young season. Shot a 78 and then shot a 77. Wallace runs, runs that one down. Maybe shot with 71 at the Homestead invite. That'd be a good pairing to follow around for yeah. nine holes. Yeah. Knocked out by Sherrick. Thrown in by Ranstead. Did that touch Sherrick in the hand? Guess not. Play on. Now McGrew will run the left flank. Craig 
Oh, nice pass. Off. He was off. And that was offsides. We got the near side had that call. That was a no doubter offside yeah. there. Well, this is as aggressive as, as and as I've seen Alex Craig. He's really playing a lot of confidence out there. Ryan Spin knocks that one down. Furnival can't control. Kicked out by Caston. Throw in Rochester. Rochester will make a sub. Bailey. Bailey splits the defense. Bailey, Tindy. Placencia to the flank. Nice little run there. I think that was Braden. Is that uh, Tyler Reese who was in there? A corner kick for Rochester. Good second effort there by... Reese. <laughs> One nothing cast, about 24.50 to go in the first half. Reese, Tindy, Tindy turns, has a look. Saved by Halterman. You know, we haven't talked about the the wind. It's it's blowing pretty hard out of the north, so the zebras are playing into the wind. That's uh Got a pretty good uh, little breeze going right now, so that's something to, to think about if that continues in the, after we switch sides in the second half. Craig, good defensive support there by Davis. And Rochester realizing that if Craig beats the first man, the second man's got to step up and help out. Burden and Rogers competing for the ball. Rogers, well, Burden got a foot on it. Davis to Tindy at midfield. Tindy to Placencia. Placencia to Bailey. It's onside. Grant Bailey with the shot. Saved by Halterman. That was a good run there by Bailey. He did go uh, left foot there. I think if he would have went right and went near post, he had the keeper kind of leaning to, to his right. Ranstead. Reese. Tindy. And that's going to be a foul on Caston as Hook. Knocked a Rochester player out off the ball. There's the field all painted up here at Caston as they are going to be uh, here tomorrow evening opening up their 2023 football season versus the West Central Trojans. Yeah. West Central had a really good year last year, Val. It's yeah, outstanding year. Um, Coach right. Hall does a very good job there, and he's really stayed the course. I mean, and he was they were rewarded with a terrific season last year. Unfortunately, they're in the same sectional with Carroll. Flora. I'm not going to say that it came out of nowhere, but, boy, I don't think anybody expected them to, yeah. to come through. I think they had, what, 10 wins on the season? Yeah, I know they beat uh, Caston a couple times. Yeah, I thought they were 10-2 and two maybe. Oh, that was dangerous by Wallace, and he was just able to knock it out as Aguilar Mendez. Got in his space. Throw in Craig. Davis. Oh, nice shot by Aguilar Mendez, but an even better save by Wallace. 
Well, Rochester with some sloppy defense. Well, did you notice what I saw there, Val? After Wallace kicks that ball out, the, the Zebras all just kind of stand there, and, yeah. and they didn't really try to get back into position, and they're, they're really lucky that Jan didn't put that one in because they just did not recover off of that. Oh, another save by Wallace. I think another that one was on Craig. frame. If he wouldn't yeah. have stopped that, that was a that was a shot on frame. One to nothing, Caston. Coming up at 21 minutes to go in the half. Be a foul on Rochester. Aguilar Mendez went down. grew so be a corner and yeah, we had an offside here on the near side yeah so should be a direct kick for Rochester You know, they changed the, the uniforms about, what, five, six years ago, Val? Mm -hmm. I, I still, I mean, I'm not used to it. It's just the home team should be wearing white in soccer. I just, years and years and years of home team wearing white, it's still just, I don't know, starting to sound like that grumpy old guy. <laughs> Get off my lawn and don't change anything. Mm -hmm. There is McGrew. Too much air under that, and it goes out of bounds. Will be a goal kick for Rochester. Yeah, you can hear some names tomorrow night on this field that might be a little unfamiliar, especially I've been following Caston junior high football the past few years. Guys like Landon Rigney and Gage Muneer. Coach Ulrich definitely relying on a lot of freshmen. And yeah, we talked about that in our preview show. If you didn't see it, it's uh, archived on rtc4.com. But, uh, you know, if, if they can develop this talented group of sophomores and freshmen and I think there's even a couple of uh, classes coming up behind them you know in a couple of years here Caston might be doing what West Central did last year yeah that was a strange uh, goal kick by Wallace it, Aguilar Mendez in the head he was a header but he wasn't even trying to head it nice play by Dossman to break that play up as Crom was about to make a run It'll be throwing for Rochester 18 minutes to go in the half. Bailey can't keep it in. It'll be a throw in for Cast. Nice pass by Isaac Craig. Rogers is going to have a look. His shot high enough the football goal post. I just kind of decided to go near post. A little too much air under. All right, Cast and West Central, are they not? conference rivals, but they are sectional rivals in football. An intriguing first game. Burden. That's a turnover. McGrew. McGrew gets by Burden. And then Tindy knocks it over the goal line. That'll be a corner kick for Caston. Good job by Tindy. I mean, he didn't really have a whole lot of options there. Just kind of get an option or an opportunity here for the Zebras to reset their defense. There's 
A couple of them here, they have their hands on their knees, Val. They're yeah. looking a little winded early in this match. A sub in is that Ranstead walking on the trainers from cast and is kind of checking to see if he's okay. Hook out of the box, Rogers. Tossed toward the net by Sutton, but it goes over the goal line. It'll be a goal kick for Rochester. Halterman runs down that long through ball. But you can tell Wyatt Davis plays a big role in this defense for Rochester. They're going to call a handball. Oh, he was out. And if he was out of the box, then it's going to be a free kick here for the Zebras right outside of the 18. This is going to be this is a real great opportunity. And let's see what who Coach Backus wants to take this kick. Placencia, is it Crom? Is it somebody else? So it's going to be Placencia. Caston sets up the wall. Placencia, way too high and over the net. Be a goal kick for Halterman and Caston. Would have been good tomorrow night, but uh, not so much here tonight. Yeah. See what Lionel Messi does for the MLS. That's just about automatic. Just from anywhere on the field. Davis kicks it back to Wallace. We'll set up Furnival. Rogers to Aguilar Mendez for Caston. And some defensive support by Davis. Placencia to Davis. Wyatt Davis. Back to the middle. He was expecting somebody there. It's going to be a foul on Rochester. As Sherrick got knocked off the ball. Placencia committed the foul, and he also came up, comes up limping now. Yeah, and this is a Rochester team that can't afford any more injuries. It's, looks like Randstad's okay. He's going to come back yeah. in, so that's a good sign. Placencia kind of hobbling over the last few steps there and takes a seat on the bench with the trainer taking a look at him. Hook. And his shot is wide. Goal kick by Wallace. Long one intended for Tindy. Headed down by Spin over to Hook. Wallace. Hook, Tindy challenging him. That was a nice play by Hook. Tindy was right in his kitchen, and Hook was kind of able to ward him off and get the ball out of the box. Get the ball out of trouble. Uh, 
Aguilar Mendez. Well, floats a nice pass to Rogers. And Furnival was there. That had uh, just the right amount of weight on it. Aguilar Mendez tipped and by Bailey and then saved by Wallace. I'm not sure that was going to be on frame, but once it deflected off Grant Bailey, Wallace had to make a save. minutes to go in the half. Caston leads one to nothing. Reese knocks that one back to Wallace who will reset. Rogers trying to work on Braden Furnival. Back to spin, offsides, the call on Sutton of Caston. Mentioned cross country. Steve, we got the Jacob Graff invite coming up on Saturday at Logansport. Both Rochester and Caston will be there. Yeah. Very few schools have run a race yet. Nice job by Dossman to def that one deflected out. Ranston now trying to control, working on Sutton. Rogers intercepts out of the box. Grant Bailey sends it forward. And the wind definitely had an impact on that. Alterman calls off spin and takes it himself. Of course, Caston hosts a uh, cross country invite here on the Saturday before Labor Day every year, and that's always a Really nice event, mm -hmm. is well attended. Right, the first, right, Caston's first two races of the year are at Logansport, the Graf Invite and the Cass County uh, meet, which been August 26th, and then the Caston Invite is Saturday, September 2nd, like you said. Uh, well, Rochester and Caston will be there, but Tippecanoe Valley will be there, Pioneer will be there. So Edison uh, Byram from Caston was actually over at the house last night. Uh, Paula is back in the country, and they came over and said hi. But um, we were talking about Brian Hernandez-Rios, a Caston grad, went to Grace and ran cross country. He graduated and is now a, a graduate runner at Lipscomb. Okay. So at the D1 level. Yeah. That's, yeah. Where, that's where Wesley Meyer went for a year. Yep, so he's he's running at Lipscomb for the yeah. graduate year. I, I believe it'd just be a year, wouldn't it? Right, grad transfer. Wesley Meyer ran four years at Olivet Nazarene, then ran for a year at Lipscomb. Yep. Well, he had just a stellar career at Gray, so, mm -hmm. you know. Oh, yeah, they're, I'm sure they're happy to have him. Nice pass along the wing. That's McGrew. And knocked out by Tindy. Big corner for Caston. I was starting to say back before Caston scored that goal, and uh, you know I was just really impressed last year with Tindy's athleticism, and he, you know, he seems to be able to get to the spots on the field that he needs to, and mm -hmm. you know, just a really good athlete. Aguilar Mendez tries to go far post, but out of bounds. Goal kick for Wallace and Rochester. I don't know, was last year his first year of playing soccer? Might have been, yeah. yeah. Probably 
Approaching six and a half minutes to go here in the first half. Still that 1-0 lead for the Comets. Wallace. Knocked out of bounds by Sherrick. You throw in for Rochester. Oh, it does get through. And the shot. And a goal. And the game is tied. Furnival. Or was that Davis? Yeah, that was Wyatt Davis. We're tied with 6-12 to go. So the Comets had that lead for quite a while, but uh, Rochester all square again. Sutton sending it forward, but Bailey wins the race from Aguilar Mendez and knocks it out of bounds. It'll be a throw in for Caston. Aguilar Mendez. Oh, headed down by Rogers. Joshua Evans, the junior defender, who hasn't had a touch if he had just almost got to his foot, and it would have been a point blank shot if he would have gotten to it. Tindy intercepts. Crom, some nice handling by Crom to avoid Dossman. Placencia is back in there. Tindy, Ranstead. That's some nice defense. Thrown ahead again, Evans, but that's Bailey. Uh, was that Bailey who knocked it out? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Actually, he didn't knock it out. That's yeah. kept inbounds by Wallace, who sends it ahead. It just kind of died over there. It wasn't going to go out. If yeah. Wallace could have let it go all the he wanted. It wouldn't have went out. Well, I like what I've seen from the cast and freshmen so far, Steve. I like Sherrick and I like McGrew. Mm -hmm. I, I think there's a lot there. And Sherrick is not afraid to stick his nose. In the, for a 50-50 ball. Now a direct kick. Here is Placencia, four minutes to go in the half. Carlos. Scores! <laughs> Rochester takes a 2-1 to one lead. Boy, that was a good kick there by Placencia. I mean, he was, he was a good 25 yards out there. That was a great play. Well, you know, he took that earlier one. And he kicked it way over the goal. Right. And I think he said, well, I'm further away now. If I kick, if I make the exact same kick now, it might go in. Yeah. Yep. And there was nothing Halterman could do on that one. That was just a great kick by Placencia. Rochester is their first lead of the season. Crom heads it down. Tindy. Give the Zebras a lot of credit for battling back. You know, Caston held on to that lead for a long time, and two goals here unanswered for Rochester. And three and a half minutes to go here in the first half, they're up two to one. Sherrick throws it in. Bailey beats Evans to the ball. Tries to make a pass to Tindy, but it's intercepted by Aguilar Mendez. Another good touch by Sherrick. Aguilar Mendez through the middle. Good support by Heishman. And with Aguilar Mendez or with Craig, I mean, you, you can't just, if they beat you 1v1, one one v one, you got to have somebody else to help out. And I think Rochester's got done a better job of that. Thrown in, Evans. Craig. Burden really battling. 
Craig goes down. Back come the Zebras. Placencia. Spin. Out of bounds and a throw in for Rochester. Drew McGrew is surrounded by some white jerseys. If that ball's kicked out, it'll be a throw in for Randstad and the Zebras. Oh, they, they get their heads turned, and then Davis's shot is deflected out by Halterman. That'll be a corner kick for Rochester. I don't know if that would have been. I don't know if that was on frame, but it's a good opportunity. Definitely shifted the uh, momentum here in favor of the Zebras in the last five minutes. Placencia in the corner, Tindy, but that was right at his shins. Tough to handle. Let's see if Caston might try a counter here. Aguilar Mendez maneuvers his way around Burden. Well, that was some nifty stuff. He got around Furnival and he got around Burden. Now let's see. There's Grant Bailey. They're going to need Aguilar Mendez to find something spectacular here. Furnival. Tindy tries to set up Ranstead along the left on the right on the right flank, but that was intercepted. Throw in Caston by McGrew. Wallace aggressively comes out for it. Picks it up in the box before the he can, the uh, running Evans can catch up to it. Settled by Davis with his boot. Hook tries to find Rogers. Aguilar Mendez tries to put a through ball, but Wallace reads that and he beats Craig to the ball. A throw by Wallace out to Tindy. Ranstead can't keep it in. Eight seconds to go in the half. Five, three, two, one, and that is the end of the first half. Saw the scrimmage. You saw they, scored, they scored some points. They gained some confidence offensively. And this is Mike Aranza's first full year as a quarterback, and he, but he's got some experienced guys to hand the ball off to, and Ryland Toloza and Caden Hill and Tyler Zellers. Okay, second half underway. Rochester up two to one. out by the Zebras. There's Bailey. Oh. Bailey sacrifices his body and gets in the way of that shot from Aguilar Mendez. Nice little touch by Placencia to get it to Davis. But then intercepted by Rogers. Yeah, Bailey will kick it out. Isaac Craig will take a shot, but he had no angle there. Hey, Val, make sure you change the halftime to second half if uh, you didn't already. I did. Okay, cool. I was just thinking about that. I should have done that before I came up here. If you're wondering why I'm saying that, I'm actually uh, doing double duty here tonight. I'm on top of the press box uh, doing the filming as well as a little bit of color commentary for you. So see the big fat shadow in the uh, – on the ground there, that's me. Rogers. But Bailey's right there. Grant Bailey just has good footwork. Yeah, he's a good athletic yeah. kid. I mean, he just, he's had to battle through a few injuries last year and this year. So once he gets healthy and Boy, I just, I still, you know, running cross country and playing soccer. I mean, that's the, 
the two hardest things to do together that I could imagine. Bailey. Oh, nice pass on the move to get it to Davis. That should be onside. Placencia. Placencia shoots wide. Mm. Yeah, it was clean. He was on, but uh, not able to get it on frame. Dossman kind of took away the left post. Yeah. So he had to go right with it. And it was just wide of the net. Yeah, it was a good job just uh, getting in the way of that and mm -hmm. making it harder for Plin now That's a giveaway. Crom. Halterman was looking for Dossman. Dossman just either wasn't looking for it, he just missed it. And will be a goal kick for Halterman and the Comets. Two to one, Rochester. 36.50 to go in the game. The cast and goal by Alex Craig with 35.57 to go in the first half. And the Rochester goals by Davis and Placencia in a span of two minutes and 18 seconds in the first half. Collision between Crom and Dossman knocked out. Yeah, good things happen when Braden Dossman touches the ball. There are a couple kids for Cass who didn't come out for soccer who I thought would and uh, were good defenders. So I think that, you know, D a little Doss Dossman's going to have some responsibilities on this team. Good job by Sutton to step in front of that shot. Craig. I don't know if you ask Burnable. him if he's going to say that. Yeah. <laughs> I think he took one right on the chin. Yeah. It'll be a foul on Caston. Bailey to Davis, who settles it. Davis floats it over the net. Well, Davis has really good. He, he's very good at settling the ball with his feet. He's the best Rochester, he's the best Rochester player at doing that. Mm -hmm. He's done that about three or four times already, and that was really nice. And now John Aguilar Mendez is down, mm. and we're going to have an injury timeout with 35-30 to go in the game. Now he's back up, and the trainer's looking at him, and might I don't know if that's a cramp or what. I hope it's just a cramp, but he's holding his hamstring, so hopefully yeah. that's yeah. not something because, you know, those those hamstrings can can be nagging injuries, so hopefully it's just a cramp. Dossman kicks the, takes the goal kick. Davis, Placencia. He might have been deflected by a cast in the boot, and Halterman is able to run it down. The ball got slowed down. Punted up in the air by Halterman. Header by Bailey. And booted out by Sutton. That might have been a miss hit. Spin knocks that one off Placencia. It'll be a goal kick for Halterman and Caston. Furnival goes back, and then there's a whistle. I think that's going to be a gonna be a foul. Bailey, will, yeah, foul on cast, and so Bailey will take the direct kick. He's kind of directing traffic here. Durant will kick it left-footed. Furnival. Alex Craig. Tindy. Alex Craig. The deflection. McGrew. Tindy. Good sl clean slide tackle by Tindy. McGrew's kick deflects off Heishman and out. Wallace calls off Bailey and picks up that throw in. 
Now, if Bailey was to actually kick that, he couldn't pick that up, right? Right. Right. If he, yeah. But he, he I don't think he did kick it, right? He, no. He, he, no, and no. Wallace yelled at him to stay away. Yeah. Yeah. But you can't kick it back to your right. keeper and pick it up. Right. It's been a nice play by Crom. He just got in the way there. Tindy going east and west. He's able to get around a hook. And then Tindy and Placencia run into each other, but it winds up in Davis's foot. Placencia goes down. Hmm. Got bodies flying all over the place. Yeah, I mean, I didn't, I didn't see a foul there. I just think it was just kind of guys tripping all over each other. Yeah. Oh, Halterman can't catch it, but then jumps on it. That's one of those plays. If uh, Rochester had put some pressure on there, they they might have got a rebound opportunity. But uh, Halterman did a nice job of getting it on the second attempt. Coming up on 31-45 to go. I just dropped two to one. Bailey off the head of Dossman. Run down by Halterman. If your coach Sanchez in the comments, Val, I mean, it's there's lots of time left, so there's no real reason to panic, but you really haven't done much as far as scoring the ball since very early in the match. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what What adjustments can they make here to get things going? Davis to Placencia. Craig back into the middle of the pitch to Evans. There's McGrew. Tindy knocks it out. Throw in for Caston. McGrew. a shot, but that was well wide to the left. I, I don't know if that was a sh shot attempt or if he thought somebody was going to be there. You can see Aguilar Mendez jogging up and down the sideline over there, so hopefully he's uh, going to be okay and able to come back in here for the Comets. Wallace. Nice job by Sherrick. Nice touch by Dossman to McGrew. There's Heisman. Well, Coach Back has talked about he wanted to see a better first touch this year. That's one of the things he's been emphasizing. I think we've we've seen that. Yeah. Uh, tonight, especially after the again that slow start, the first 10, 15 minutes of the game. McGrew runs into a couple of Rochester players. Brock Hook. And there's Wallace. I think Wallace kind of called off Bailey. Bailey was ready to put a foot on it and said, nope. I'll pick it up and I'll get it out to midfield and Wyatt Davis. Ranstead. With Sherrick again. Hook. Across the field to Rogers. Isaac Craig. Goes out, throw in Rochester. 28 and a half minutes to go. We, got off, we had a lightning delay tonight, so we got off to a late start. And it actually ended up being an hour because it was uh, 6 o'clock, I think, when we yeah. got going. So 
By the time everything cleared out. Beautiful night, though, after uh, that little storm blew through. Yeah. Dossman didn't really have an angle on the pass and couldn't get a shot up in the air, and Wallace was able to corral that. It's high up in the air. Nice touch by Placencia. Offsides? No. Handball, I think. Handball. Yeah. mentioned the Rochester boys tennis team was scheduled to play Triton tonight. That was rained out and rescheduled. Yeah, they did get the big win against Valley in their uh, opener, so congratulations to the boys. Yeah, that Rochester Triton makeup date is August 28th at Triton. Foul on Caston. Heishman to take the direct kick. I'm just thinking Triton, one of the few teams in the Hoosier North that have tennis for the boys. Mm -hmm. Boy, a nice diagonal pass. And Rogers kind of retreats with it a little bit. What a play by Rochester. They throw it ahead. Halterman will come out. That was Davis again. Wish they could have got something going yeah. out of that because that was such a good play. But mm -hmm. Bailey will kick that out. So McGrew was starting to kind of pinch in. Whistle, sub. Aguilar Mendez is coming back in. Yeah. And who else is that? <laughs> Emily Rodas now in for Caston. Number one in blue. Gets her first appearance tonight, isn't it? Yep. Mm, yeah. That's going to be a foul on Crom. A little too much there. Braden Dossman will take the direct kick. Centers it. Rodas can't quite settle it. Burden. Greg couldn't quite settle it. Davis down the middle of the pitch. Placencia. Tindy. Spin breaks up that play, knocks it out. Another throw in for Rochester. 25 minutes to go in the game. You know, Val, this is a, a pretty unique setup here for the Comets football field. You don't see a whole lot of high school football fields in Indiana that don't have a track. The, the right. track and, uh, you know, area is actually behind the field here. Yeah, good point, yeah. McGrew, McGrew's got a step. McGrew shoots. It's oh. going to go over the net. I think he missed, maybe misread the wind again like Placencia did on that direct kick. I don't know if he misread it uh, as much as he mishit it because yeah. it, it actually would have played in his favor because it mm -hmm. was going from left to right, but I think he just got too much underneath it. Boy, with McGrew and Sherrick, you those are two talented freshmen mm -hmm. right off the bat. You notice them. Yeah, they get some pitch time together with this older group, and I, I think this casting team come, uh, you know, into the year yeah. sectional time, they'll they'll have something to to say in that Argus sectional. Yeah, Sherrick is just fearless out there. And McGrew is too, really. Davis gets to the ball first. Davis to Crom, he shoots and scores. Three to one, Rochester with 23:42 to go in the game. Braden Crom, his first goal of the year. And Davis, who has scored the first goal, gets the assist there. And that was just Wyatt Davis just outworking the cast and comments on that one. I mean, he just wanted that ball more than, mm -hmm. than they did. And 
Do you think he's got some uh, center of gravity? I mean, he yeah. he's got some balance, that's for mm -hmm. sure. And that was a nice finish by Crom too. He didn't play footsie with it. He just put it right at the net. Yeah, far post and sent it home. That was one of the things I learned from all those years of broadcasting with Andy Stone and Argus just far post is going to win you the day most of the time if you can find it. Mm -hmm. Good play by Burden. The girls soccer update McConaughey leads Rochester 2 to nothing at halftime over at Blackator. Okay. TRC opener, the ladies ease. Wonder if they had a delay up there. I know they don't start it was a 5:30 start. Yeah, they don't what, normally what start as early but They must have had a little bit of a delay as well because we didn't start till six and we're at half time or we're in the second half. It's kind of that time of year where you can have a pretty bad storm going on and you go a mile south and nothing. Goal kick by Wallace. Placencia heads it up. Oh, uh, not a good touch. And Dossman will just give Rochester a corner kick. Yeah. Just uh, didn't want to mess around there. Keston's uh, defense has got to really tighten up here if they want to stay in this game. Down two goals with uh, just a little over 20 minutes to go. Let's see if Placenci will float it up into the box. He does, aiming to the far post, but it goes out. I think he was trying to. I think he was looking for Davis. Yeah. But put a little too much curve on that. Yeah, I think the wind might have played into that a little bit. Three unanswered goals here for Rochester. They lead three to one. Just under 21 minutes left in this match. Got out of bounds here. Be a throw in. Good play by Heishman. Heishman's played pretty well, I think. Yeah. I think a lot of times for the defenders, it's just it's all about getting the right angle mm -hmm. on the ball. Tindy tries to throw it forward to Placencia, but it'll go out and it will be a goal kick for Halterman and the Comets. We're about halfway through the second half, and Rochester leads cast in 3 to 1. It was 2 to 1 at halftime. Yeah, I never played soccer, but that was always something that the football coaches would, would talk about, you know, make sure you have the right angle, take the right angle, especially when you're not real fast. <laughs> Groot. Throw in for Caston, so McGrew will throw it in. Can Craig get there? Nope, Ranstead. Or, or, excuse me, Heishman beats him to the ball, and then Wallace punts it back midfield. Davis down the middle, wins the race to the ball. Can't put a lot into his shot. Saved by Halterman. If you, I'm not even sure that was a shot. No, I wouldn't call that a okay. shot. It was just a ball hit in the general vicinity. Pass intended for Rodas, but it doesn't get there. Nice play by Furnival. McGrew deflected out by Heishman. Throw in Kasten. Wyatt, Wyatt Davis has been impressive here tonight. Yeah. Right. At, I really thought of Wyatt as more of a defender. Mm hmm. But, uh, Craig. Fires it up on end. I'm not sure that was on frame, but Wallace catches it. It was potentially dangerous. 
it was dropping there. I don't know if it would have done anything, but it was it was close enough to warrant uh, making a save for sure. Aguilar Mendez, after a hook knocked it down. Placencia, can he split the defense? Placencia shoots. Save by Halterman. Ooh, that was a good save. That one had some zip on it. McGrew. Played by Crom. Kicks it out. It'll be a throw in for Caston. Under 18 minutes to go. No, throw in for Rochester. Never mind. Hmm. I think people on the field were confused. Yeah. There was two people on the sideline with balls getting ready to throw yeah. them in. <laughs> Another throw in for Rochester. Dossman, Sherrick, Tinney knocks him off the ball. Hook. Aguilar Mendez working on Tindy. And a whistle. Oh. Foul on Craig of Caston. It seems like the, if the adjustment that Caston's making is uh, pass the ball from the middle out to the flanks. Mm hmm. get Rodas and McGrew involved. Rodas. Heishman. Another touch by Rodas. Heishman. So. I think one thing that's made a difference for the Zebras, like you said, the, their first touches have been so much quicker and, and better than uh, what we saw from them last season. And yeah. yeah. It just makes a makes a really big difference. I mean, you get that first touch and you get it settled and you can do what you want to do with it then. Craig tried to get that one to the net. Easily gobbled up by Wallace. I mean, that's the kind of thing that you saw, you know, from all those Argus teams that were so successful was they just had a, a great first touch and, and they could get the ball where they wanted it to from there. Right. And Culver Academy is awesome at it. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Concordia as well. Anybody that's going to be yeah. successful, they, they have yeah. to have a great first touch. and. Mm -hmm. Wallace? Again, Culver Academy and Fort Wayne Dwinger are the two schools in Rochester sectional that are ranked. Concordia is not ranked. Nah, that'll change. Yeah. <laughs> they always seem to end up being mm -hmm. ranked by the end of the year. Drew McGrew. North White is the only team in Caston sectional that is ranked. Ranked number 17 this week. Of course, it was North Wide who beat Rochester 5-0 on Tuesday. Bailey will drop it off. And Wallace can't touch it with his hands. And he gets it out to about the close to midfield. Aguilar Mendez settles. Craig. Aguilar Mendez. Locked down by Bailey. Tindy. Heishman knocks it off. Aguilar Mendez should be throwing for Rochester, isn't he? Or what's the call? Yeah. Yeah. McGrew was ready to throw it in. Official said, nope, not you. Now McGrew's got a touch again. Bailey misses. Ooh. Yeah. Crom. <laughs> Did that take a funky spin or what? <coughs> I don't know, but it yeah. was just on the outside of the post. I don't know what he did there. It was like a punch kick kind of thing. I think maybe it was the defender's foot in you know, collaboration with the kick and 
Kasten has an opportunity here out of the corner. First corner kick of the half for Kasten. Did they have, they only had one or two in the first half, didn't they? They had five in the first half. Did they? Okay. Yeah. Those were all really early then. Yeah. Yeah. Nice touch by Reese. Tindy, can he keep it in? No, it's a corner. Tindy was trying to keep it in and kick it out. It should have to be a throw in, but it is a corner. It's corner kick number seven in this game for Caston. And it occurs with just under 13 minutes to go. Caston trails by two goals. Dossman went down. Not sure if it had it anyway. And Tindy race easily. Aguilar Mendez gets an angle on him. And Aguilar Mendez to Sherrick. But that's guess who? Wyatt Davis, who steps in between Spin and Sherrick. And it's eventually going to be run down by Halterman. And I'm not sure if he just lost the ball there. He goes left and the yeah. ball goes right. There wasn't uh, anybody there to pass it to. Three to one Rochester. They led two to one at halftime. Only goal in this half by Crom of Rochester. It's Craig. Next that one out. It'll be a throw in for Rochester. Wallace was trying to advance out of his box, try to set up a play. Twelve minutes to go. TRC just keeps getting better and better in boys soccer, Steve. I mean, Manchester's always good. Mm -hmm. Placencia, Placencia shoots. He scores. I'm not sure what just happened. That was kind of a, looked like a save there, and I, I don't know if he just lost it, it looks yeah. like. Slipped through Halterman's hands, and that is a goal for Placencia. Hmm. Four to one, Rochester. Yeah, I mean, McConaughey the last few years has been a, a very solid team in, in boys soccer uh, down there as well. Yeah, and they play on, they know how to play on their turf field. Mm -hmm. And the, another program that's coming on in the TRC is Wabash. Yeah. Actually, a good friend of mine, Bob Jones, is the uh, voice coach at McConaughey. And another program that's been coming on in the TRC is Tippecanoe Valley. I think Trevor Brown, that program took a step forward in Trevor Brown's first year. Mm -hmm. That one was not quite on frame. Craig, a Rochester player just got a toe on it, slowed it down, and Wallace is able to cover up. 4-1 Rochester. Yeah, I was over at Valley for quite a while today actually talking to Sam and Brandon, and they're they're excited. They're mm -hmm. excited about that soccer team. Gio Ariaga, mm -hmm. remember the name? He's one of the better players in the area. He was, I believe, he was first team All RTC last year. And I would imagine we'll be discussing him for player. I wouldn't be surprised if we were discussing him for player of the year at the end of the year. How about Connor Burton of Winnemac? Had seven goals in a game earlier this year. And Connor, Connor's another kid who will be uh, uh, kicking the ball under the Friday night lights for the Coach Burgess's Warriors. Yeah. Playing soccer and football. Yeah, I think they had uh, 12 total in that match, didn't they? Where he scored seven? Yeah. Whole bunch of subs coming in for Caston. It looked really good for the Comets early. You know, they had that one nothing lead, and they they held that for most of that first half. But four unanswered have uh, given the Zebras the command of this one with under ten to go. Thirteen is Josiah Helt in blue. Nineteen is Braden Rush. Aguilar Mendez. 
Looking like Coach Backus and uh, the Rochester Zebras will pick up the first win of the season mm -hmm. here at Caston. Think about nine minutes to go. In the middle, Halterman is able to win the race from Placencia. Eichmann gets knocked off the ball. Good play by Craig. Knocked out by Bailey. Throw in Caston, I believe. Sub. More subs coming in for Caston. Maddie Sproul is in. She's wearing number four in blue. Jackson Robbins is wearing number two. He's a freshman. Maddie gets the RTC employee kid close up. Her dad, Casey, one of our linemen. There's Robbins. Tindy with the tackle. Throw in Caston. Of course, I'm going to start that, Val. I need to get Tyson because he's not only an employee, he's a boss of ours. So <laughs> make sure we get a little uh, air time for him yeah, over there. If, if we want to retire. Yeah. Uh, let's see, Tindy knocked off. Jan Aguilar Mendez down again. That's not good. Yeah, he's near the sideline. There's a shot at Coach Backus and Coach Callis Chuck over on the Rochester sideline there. Second year head coach of the Rochester Zebras. Tyson is incredibly modest as a, he played for the Canadian national team. Yeah, he was okay. I, I've heard that, yeah. He played uh, collegiately at Huntington University. And mm -hmm. So uh, they're gonna walk around there with Jan, but it looks like, um, is it Jan or John? How do you say that? John. Right? John, okay. Yeah. It uh, looks like it is, but hopefully just some cramping. Yeah. So. Final score tonight, Winnemac Boys Soccer defeated Oregon Davis 4-3. to three. Okay. That, uh, nice job by Crom just to get it out of there. That will be a conference matchup next year. Yep. Still, still trying to wrap my head around Oregon Davis being in the Hoosier North. That's... Going to be interesting. Yeah, the Hoosier North will go what from four to seven. Con or or soccer, soccer schools. Yeah, yeah, because they're going to pick up uh, OD Argus in uh, North Miami. Mm -hmm. Caston, Culver, Laville, and Winnemac are the current four. But they're losing Laville, so they'll lose yeah, one. Yeah, so it'll be six. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry about that. Yeah. Knox doesn't have soccer, which is kind of odd, being a three A school mm -hmm. like that. Braden Rush trying to get it to Robbins. Robbins gets a uh, sandwich in between two Rochester defenders. Tindy, as we get to the six minute mark. Davis, nice play by Robbins to keep his balance. The thing about those sh shorter players, they keep their balance mm -hmm. so well. That's why That's why it's you don't hear about many really tall, great soccer players. Pele was what five eight. Yeah. Messi's what five eight five nine. Maradona was what 
five, six. Low center of gravity helps in soccer. I Cut by Bailey, throw in for Caston. I remember when I was in high school, Argus had a foreign exchange student from the Netherlands that uh, was 6'10", and he was a really good soccer player. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, you don't see that very often. Actually, he lives in New Jersey and, and runs a, a soccer academy right now. Okay. Ibrahimovic, he's, he was tall. He was a great soccer player, 6'7", six, 6'8". Six, you imagine doing a corner kick with him in the middle? Yeah. Hey, get it up there. Let Jordy go get it. Mm -hmm. Tindy down the middle. Tindy shoots and scores. 5-1. Tindy with a run down the middle. Does a, does a three-way chest bump with Placencia and Bailey. That might be, I don't know for sure, that might be his first goal. I don't know that. But he was he was mainly a defender last year, so I, I don't know how many opportunities he got to score a goal last year, but that was a really nice looking play there by Tindy. Sproul. Five unanswered here by Rochester, now leading 5-1 as we approach four minutes to go. We have five different goal scorers for Rochester, or is it four? Four. Yeah. Halterman runs that one down. I couldn't remember, did Davis have two? Placencia. Placencia has two, yeah. Burden. Davis. Bailey. Heishman. Deflected out by Landon Fernung. Fernung wearing number 17 for Kasten, so. Rodas with a touch. Number five for Kasten is Cayman Lee. So this is everybody on, everybody's listed on the roster that we got has gotten in for Kasten. Oh, Placencia wins the race, and that ball goes just wide. Under three minutes to go. Have, uh, nice pass, Placencia to Davis. Nice play by Rush. Lady Comets taking on Culver in volleyball action is uh, going on right now in the gym here. And we got that streaming for you on RTC4 with no commentary. So if you want to take a peek over there or on the uh, RTC4 uh, Sports app. Tanner Crom, a freshman, is known for Rochester. He's wearing number three in white. Crom, a foul on Rochester. And it's Elliot Miller who's now in. Get to meet Elliot at picture day. He's quite the character. Headed down by Bailey. Rochester made some subs of Grant Bailey is going to play all 80 minutes in all likelihood. Yeah, he's all right. Yeah. If anybody on this team can do that, he should be able to. He's got a few miles logged in already this year. Tindy. Tindy. 
It's Tanner Crom. Mm -hmm. Tanner's a freshman. Braden's a senior. Braden scored earlier this half. 5 1 Rochester. Final minute. Saved there by Halterman. The Braden Crom on the shot? I think it was. Placencia. Placencia turns around. Oh, Tindy. 17 seconds. Tindy can't get a foot on it, and it will be a corner. Kasten's lucky they didn't call that in the box there. That could have been a foul call. Seven seconds. To the far post. <laughs> Tanner <laughs> Crom, not quite. I don't, yeah, just a little bit outside there, right? And that will do it. Final score from the crater, Rochester, five, Caston, one. Rochester's now one and one, and Caston is 0 oh and two.